Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Bob Syrian. I am the uh, Territory Director and Business Development Manager for Envision Technology. It's a Netherlands-based company, European company, and I run uh, the uh, business development and territory management in the United States for that company. I apologize for the delay. For some reason, um, my uh, Zoom meeting wouldn't activate, and finally we did. I know we're a few minutes late here. Um, I'll try to get through the material um, really as uh, fast as I can. Um, the uh, Envision glasses are a device which captures information and then provides you with an audio uh, response. So uh, in this case, uh, most of the time people are using our device as a reading tool. So it will capture a letter, it'll capture your computer screen, it'll capture your smartphone information, and it will translate that and give you back an audio uh, response to um, uh, what you've asked. The uniqueness of our device, as opposed to many other devices out there, is that it uh, has an AI capability. And I'm sure many of you have heard about uh, AI. Um, and basically, what our device allows you to do is ask questions regarding a document, an illustration, uh, a photograph, and then um, uh, the answer that question outside the scope of um, just ordinary reading back to you. Uh, soon our device will be updated to Chat 4, GPT OpenAI Chat 4, and uh, not only will you be able to uh, talk to our device and ask it just general information, but it will also uh, act as a, a personal uh, assistant for you. So um, that is a unique feature. Um, as far as I know, uh, we are the leader in wearable technology that has uh, an AI feature. We were the first to adopt it about nine months ago. And uh, while others now are starting to add AI, um, we will have uh, uh, be ahead of them because of the fact that, you know, it takes time to, to uh, 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 add this coding and everything into the, into the systems. Um, again, it's very unique feature. Uh, it works now on, on most of our, our features in the device. Um, let me go through the features uh, for you. For those of the, you that have some vision, you'll be able to see the, the device on my, my face, but I, I will also spend uh, extra time uh, detailing the device for you so um, that you can uh, follow along. Uh, the device sits on a pair of, of frames. Uh, they are like glass frames, but they are unique to the um, the device itself. The hardware sits on the right arm of the frame. And basically, the hardware, uh, it's so advanced at this time that on our unit, um, it uh, really mimics what you might have on your desk as a desktop computer. So it has uh, basically a computer in it. It has audio. It has a camera attached on the front part of the glasses. Um, and it captures information and then again processes it and re responds uh, to uh, what it's, it's read. Uh, again, it's all on the right-hand side. There are several different frames because the frame that's shipped with the glasses, which is what I'm wearing right now, is a very light... Uh, titanium frame and you can uh, also get additional frames that look more like a pair of glasses if you wear them and you can tint those for people that have some usable vision or maybe are not blind or visually impaired uh, you can put a prescription in it you can tint it things like that so 
Um, it's cumbersome just to put them over a pair of glasses. So um, we do offer these other frames and then you go to an optician or an optometrist and have the uh, lenses put in or tinted and things like that. So the, 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 the plastic that's on the front of the other types of frames is meant to be tinted or add a prescription to things like that. Um, there are three sets of features on our glasses. We start out with the reading features, almost all assistive technology, as I think Naomi uh, will attest to, um, are um, based on a reading feature. So most of them have optical character recognition, OCR, and that feature allows uh, the person, the end user using the device to read. Now, there are two different types of wearable technologies. There are magnification. Uh, you have to have some usable vision to use a magnification uh, wearable technology. And then for people that don't have any usable vision and or just prefer an audio um, type of response, there are the wearable technologies with audio response. And there's about a half a dozen of those out there. There's much more um, devices that have magnification than have audio. Audio is a little bit uh, more sophisticated. There's um, a, a lot more coding to be done to be able to use uh, for the developers to, to get the glasses to be able to read. So the basic feature in the glass is an optical character recognition. Again, that takes information, it compiles it, and then it reads it back to you. Uh, secondly, there's another reading feature called Instatext. And what we call that is on-demand reading. So you turn that on and you march around. You walk up the street, you go in a mall, you're in a restaurant, and it will talk to you about anything that appears in text. So let's say you're walking down the street. It'll tell you a street sign. If there's a bus sign, it'll talk to you about the bus sign. And you basically leave that on until you're ready, ready to turn, turn that off. Uh, the uh, two unique features, I get, well, there's actually a few more, but the, the two features that are most distinct in our device, one is called batch scan. And what we can do with our device is we can copy or scan multiple pages. So a chapter in a book, a recipe, a menu, we can capture all that into the device and then have it read back to you, for example, the menu or a recipe or a chapter in a book. So that allows you not to have to rescan that every time you want to read it or scan each page separately, have it read it to you, then scan another page. That's very unique. Uh, to our device. Our device also reads handwriting and it will read that on the go. So if you, let's say you're reading a letter and in the column somebody scribbled something in handwriting, it will change to the handwriting feature and it will read it uh, back to you, the handwriting, and then go back to the printed uh, textual uh, letters. Uh, secondly, there are uh, different features of the reading capture system. One is called guidance. Guidance uh, allows a person that has very low vision or is blind to center the document to get absolute accuracy when using our device. Our, our device when using, using guidance is 95% accurate. And that's so high that many outside manufacturers are now purchasing our software to add to their systems. On the newest of humanware devices, you will see our Envision application on that device because our OCR software is stronger than the one that they've actually uh, developed themselves. And some manufacturers are now purchasing our OCR software. So we have the three features. We have the reading feature. We have the um, uh, the uh, uh, handwriting feature, and then we have guidance, and then the final type of feature is called layout detection. Layout detection, uh, let's say you're reading a magazine or you're reading a newspaper, that's multiple columns. Most of the OCR reads from left to right. 
Um, and if you have columns, that doesn't make any sense because it's reading across the column. The device automatically recognizes multiple columns, and instead of reading horizontally, uh, it reads uh, vertically. Um, it also uh, reads in 80 different languages. So you can select multiple languages and it will uh, and it will read back and forth between those languages if you're multilingual. And also, um, if you are using the AI feature, it will also translate. So let's say there's text that's in Spanish and you want it to uh, read back to you in English, you can ask it to translate that text from English to Spanish or other multiple languages. So it's very handy to be able to use that. Um, two other things about the device that are very unique. One is the battery life. The battery life on our device is five to six hours of continuous use. There is no device on the market that holds a battery charge for as long as ours. Now you can use them with extra batteries, you can plug them in, do stuff like that. You can keep up with our device, but our device actually for five or six hours of continuous use, it also has a sleep feature. So if you lay it down or you stop to get a drink or use the restroom, uh, it goes into a sleep mode and you tap it to turn it back on. And that effectively allows you to use our device for eight or nine hours without having to recharge it. If you have to re recharge it, it's a fast charge. So you can charge from zero to 100% in an hour. So, and you can use it while it's charging. So, you know, it's effectively, you're not gonna be in a situation where you're not gonna be able to use uh, the device. The final thing about the device is very unique. And this is an intentional feature. Um, we call it agnostic programming. Now, what that means to the end user is that we decided when we developed the device to use a, a programming feature that allows us to continue to add software to the hardware of the unit. So unlike some manufacturers that use up their board space by adding features, there's nothing wrong with that. But at some point they run out of space and then what they have to do is replace the board in their device and create a new version of the device, which then costs the end user additional uh, funds if they wanna, if they wanna the same device with the new features on it. Our device is agnostic. We continue to add features uh, on to the device. The last two years, uh, we've added 12 new features to the device and um, we're continuing to add features uh, as, as we go. We have a total of 25 or, or I'm sorry, 22 features uh, on the device. So the first part of the device usage is reading and that's always very important to people. Uh, the second part is communication. So what we do is we have a communications feature on the device, which you can do two things with at this time. One is you can do what we call call an ally. An ally is a sighted person on the other end of the device. So you install, uh, uh, let's say it's your brother or sister. You have them install on their device the ally app and you call them up as you would on FaceTime, for example, and they can then look uh, through uh, your glasses in real time and help you interpret uh, your surroundings uh, uh, or answer a question for you. you might be lost or you might be at the wrong gate at the airport. They can read that, obviously, as a person that is sighted and help you with that. That feature is free. Um, it's unique. Uh, as opposed to like FaceTime, because what happens with FaceTime is, um, one, it's not hands-free. So you're holding your phone and the phone and you're moving it around like this. It's very difficult for a blind or low vision person to use uh, the device uh, and uh, use FaceTime and, and, and try to show somebody on the other end exactly what they're looking at. With our device, it's hands-free, it's on your face, and it's, uh, and it's very easy just to move your head just a little bit to show the other person. It's steady and also 
uh, a wide field of view. It's 70 degree field of view as opposed to about 30 degrees on your phone. So it covers a lot more area and it's also more steady and and easier to use. Like I said, it's absolutely free. There are no, no time charges, anything like that. And you can load hundreds of people on there if you if you need to, to be able to contact to ask questions to. That's called call an ally feature. Then we also have call an IRA agent. IRA is a commercial company that allows people for subscription fee uh, to get their questions answered. And IRA claims that the people on the other end are professional. For example, if you call and say, I'm lost at uh, new, uh, uh, the Newark, uh, New Jersey airport, um, they'll have somebody on the other end that's uh, an expert at guiding you around that airport and they'll get on the line with you and, and assist you. Or it could be a federal building, a state building, and they have experts to actually handle that. Uh, help you read a legal document, something like that. Now, it's not necessary to have that, but many people that are still in the work uh, uh, arena and are still, you know, they have jobs, they use they use IRA all, all the time. Let's say they travel. I have a um, I have a, a sales manager who is blind, and every time he goes to convention, he calls up IRA, has them guide him through the hotel and the exhibit hall and things like that. And then he memorizes, uh, you know, those uh, uh, navigation points and he's, uh, it's much easier for him to travel in, in that environment. So that's, that's an example of using IRA. Um, the third type of features that the device uses are uh, object recognition or product recognition features. So the device, will recognize cash, it'll recognize people, facial recognition, it'll recognize objects, um, it'll explore for you, it'll, uh, the AI feature will tell you, you know, your environment around you. It has a described scene, so it will describe a scene for you and answer uh, based on its knowledge, the AI knowledge, both that you've given it while you're using it and just just general uh, knowledge on our servers, uh, it'll give you information about about your uh, environment. So those are helpful types of things. Most of those types of features are on a lot of the wearable technology. That's not anything surprising, except again, like we, we like I've said, we've added an AI feature, which is extremely helpful in in giving you information about. Uh, your environment. I'll give you a good example of uh, how to use the AI feature. I was up in Olympia, Washington about three weeks ago, traveling around with my distributor, and we went to the Lions Club in Olympia, Washington. And we were showing the uh, the managers of that uh, branch how, how to use the device. And I went into the AI feature and I asked it to give me a history of the Lions Club in America. And basically what it did is it stopped. It started talking about the, uh, the current members, the president, the board of the, uh, of the Lions Club, told me about the history of the Lions Club, told me about the current branch I was with, what they do, how they benefit the blind and low vision community. It went on for about five minutes explaining uh, everything you ever wanted to know about the Lions Club. So that was like an example of how um, how the device works. I've also used it at lighthouses. I was at the San Francisco Lighthouse, and I asked it about uh, questions about where they were located. I asked it questions about when they were founded, who their current uh, uh, executives were, uh, and and it answered those questions for me as an AI feature of the device. So you could see it, 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 the things that you can ask the AI feature um, are, are are limitless, really. And uh, you just have to sort of build on what you're asking. You start building up by asking it simple questions, and then as it gets as you get more and sophisticated with the unit, uh, you can ask you know more detailed type of questions. I think at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop for a moment and let uh, 
let you ask questions. Um, I have four questions in chat, um, and I'm wondering if, uh, Naomi, you can answer to this for me, whether uh, you would like me to um, uh, take the questions on chat first or the uh, questions directly uh, in, our, in our webinar. I'm sorry, but I don't see any questions in chat for you. Oh, okay. I, it says four here. Uh, let me open it and see. Yeah. Um, they could have been off on me. They are you. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I didn't. I hadn't opened it yet. All right, then let's open it up to to a few uh, questions by the participants. If you have any questions regarding it, and then. Um, we can talk a little bit more, and I can also give you uh, a few uh, demonstrations of what what the device uh, will do and how it how it how it works. Any questions? Hi, Bob. Um, this is Shahida. Um, I would like to ask about the audio. When it speaks to you, are you using anything uh, in the ear, like an ear bud or something, or does it speak aloud? So both. Um, it without, uh, so it has a Bluetooth feature in the device, and when you're uh, setting up the device, you set up your your Bluetooth. Um, I use a little JBL Bluetooth speaker for those of you that have vision, you can see what I use right here. And that does broadcasting when I'm making presentations. But you can also either plug in a set of earbuds or ear headphones, or you can also use earbuds and have the, the, the audio silence through those earbuds. Um, there are uh, nine different uh, voices, male, female, uh, American, European, voices that you can use and you can also adjust the volume of the device from very low to to louder uh, to be able to hear uh, what the device is saying it is not bone conduction uh, technology but it's very similar um, it the the speaker is uh, is embedded in the device behind your ear and uh, it has it, it's pretty sharp so um, again, it, it does do both. You can silence it if you're in a, let's say, a library or a bookstore. Uh, but you can also just use it in everyday life by just listening to the audio uh, respond to your question. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? You got to have some questions. I was wondering about the cost. Okay, so there are three versions of the device. Uh, there is the read version, which is meant for people with usable vision or other types of disabilities. Uh, they might have uh, uh, they might have TBI, traumatic brain injury. They could have different types of learning disabilities like dyslexia, you know, hundreds of different things. And that device is meant for people that just need the reading function of the device. So you would get the instant text, the scan text, and the batch scan along with the AI features in that device. That device is, uh, and they all look identical, all of them. They're, they're The software in them uh, in the read devices, just the software that I've just indicated, but the device is identical. And that device is $1,900. Um, then there's a home edition of the device. It has all the current software on it. Um, and the only distinction is that uh, you get a uh, update for a year. So if you bought the device today, you would get updates on the device that's new free features not updates on the existing programming but updates on new features for a year to 2025 and then you would 
have to buy each year a subscription that would cost you $200 for the updates. Now, you don't have to do that. It's completely optional. You could be completely happy with, you know, what we've already provided you through 2025 and never update. But if you wanted to do an update, let's say we came out with a navigation feature. We have orientation and mobility now, but we do not have navigation. But let's say we came out with a navigation feature and you wanted to get that, you would have to pay uh, the $200. Um, and finally, we have the professional edition. Professional edition is identical software to the home edition, but it's subscription free. So for the life of the device, you don't have to pay for those subscriptions that I just spoke about. Uh, you get an additional year of hardware warranty, um, and you also get an extra pair of the lenses or the glasses that I talked to you earlier about. Uh, so instead of paying additional for that additional eyewear, um, you would get one, you get a choice. There are three different types of eyewear in addition to the one that you get with the glasses. That would be um, at no charge. Um, the price of the home edition is 2,500. The price of the professional edition is 3,500. Um, we designed the professional edition because many agencies, um, state voc rehab, uh, VAs, which we do a lot of work with, uh, came to us and said, you know, once we decide to purchase uh, your device, we don't want the end user coming back in a year from now asking us for $200. So could you please design a device at a fixed price that we can just buy that device and close our file on our end? So we put it together specifically for agencies that didn't want to have their end users coming back to them and asking them for additional funds. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. How long does your warranty last on the glasses? So the the warranty on the hardware is one year. And then if you buy the professional, then it would make it two years. Um, and then the software warranty really is unlimited because software we can fix remotely. And so if you ever have an issue where there's a bug in your software or, you know, anything can happen, the, the, the chain, the copy chain is, is, is bad, we can go in remotely and fix that in your device. So really the software aspect of it is unlimited. Uh, hardware it, it usually isn't a problem either because, uh, first of all, uh, when we pick the hardware that we use, this Google Enterprise hardware, specifically because uh, of the uh, the use of it. There's very little. I mean, we have very few hardware issues. We've had maybe a dozen. We sold probably now close to five thousand of these units, and we have maybe a dozen hardware issues. And the other thing about it is, is you figure it out real quickly, because. If something's not working from a hardware perspective, usually there's there's really an issue and and we figure it out right away. An example is in a couple of cases, the audio hasn't worked. So people turn it on, they're using it, but they're not getting any audio uh, feedback. So we know that that's a hardware issue and we replace it right away. The chances of somebody using the device for a year and not realizing that there's an audio issue, you know, are very slim. So most of the time we've captured any hardware issue right away. We, we do not fix hardware issues for a software company. We just replace the device. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? We have a question in the chat. Does the company okay. provide any orientation trainings for new users? Yes. So, so it, oh, I'm sorry. Let me fin let, let me let you finish the question. And what type of tech support is available for consumers? So, 
uh, I'll answer the second question first. We have uh, unlimited tech support. It's all done um, by email initially. And then if we have to have a technical call, we get our engineers on the phone and we, we handle it uh, from a technical issue. Uh, we have almost 24 hours support uh, because we're in, we're worldwide. So we have uh, customer success uh, individuals that are uh, in different countries, Canada, North America, uh, Mexico, uh, Europe, and they'll get on the line and try to solve the problem initially. And then if necessary, we'll, we'll get our technical experts, our engineers on the phone to correct it. Um, and then uh, in terms of onboarding, every purchase comes with two hours of onboarding. Um, and you can, uh, when you get your device in the mail, you simply, um, uh, there's a link in, in your information, you tap that and uh, you'll get an appointment with one of our certified trainers and that person will train you, uh, help you. One, the most important part is help you set up the device. So there's a pairing process because there's Wi-Fi involved and some of the features and things like that and language issues. So we'll help, we'll set up all those for you to make the transition to using the device easier. Now that's if you're buying from us online, you can buy from us on our online store online, but you can also, and in many states uh, in the United States, we have certified distributors and you can uh, contact one of them and they will come to your home or business demonstrate for you and train you on the device. So you have one-on-one -on -one personal training, um, all, all of which are done as part of the purchase of the device and there's no extra charge. Thank you. I see that Mike has his hand raised. Okay. Uh, would you like to ask your question, Mike? Mike? Ooh. Hi, Mike. Do you have a funding guide? Um, on our website, we do have some suggestions uh, for funding. Uh, we don't fund ourselves. Uh, um, we're in the process of creating a subsidiary uh, in North America so we can do uh, some of our uh, own funding. But at the present time, we don't have funding. Um, but, um, uh, when, when you, uh, communicate with our distributors in every territory, um, there are, uh, philanthropic groups and also agencies, uh, where our device is, is approved and, um, and there are funding options within those agencies. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, Bob, if you buy several, uh, like a couple of pairs of glasses fr frames, can you move the device from one frame to another? Yes. Yeah, there's a, a little uh, corner hitch on, on each pair, and you simply push that down and the frame comes off and you install the, the other frame. Here, for those of you that have uh, some sight, uh, here is... Uh, one of our frames it's called the lux frame and as you can see it's a little bit different this, 
You yeah. currently have the 2024 pass. So this is a regular pair of glasses. They all install on the right-hand side. This is the hardware on this side of the glass. And then these glasses are capable of being tinted or adding a prescription to. Uh, mm -hmm. This is just one, one example. There's a lighter version, and then there's also a more industrial version uh, for those that might be working in an industrial environment like uh, we sold several pair to Amazon employees that work on an assembly line, things like that. And they're a little bit stronger and they have a lot more eye protection uh, to them. So uh, we do have some options. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any more questions? Can they be worn over glasses? They, they can be, but it's very cumbersome um, because you're putting uh, two, uh, the, the earpiece part of it, you have two of those over your, over your face and it makes the, these are pretty sturdy on my face. They're not going anywhere. But if, you, if, if there is another pair of glasses, it would have to be worn underneath because up in the, uh, in the right hand corner up here is where the camera is so the envision glasses would have to be on the outs outside side of the glasses so it's just simpler uh to get a frame where if, for example if you want them tinted or or you need a prescription added to add that type of uh, prescription to the to the envision glasses rather than trying to wear um multiple multiple glasses. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. One of the things that I would encourage you to do, um, I'll leave with you uh, my uh, email address um, and the, the demonstrations and all the discussions and stuff like that, are always at no charge, including through our distributors. So you don't have to fear um, that, you know, we're going to charge you for something until you're ready to buy, actually buy the, the device. Um, and I would encourage you, um, if, you're, um, if, if you're interested, to um, contact us and let us set up a formal one-on-one -on -one demo, either virtually online uh, in a discussion as we're having here or have our distributor visit and let them sh show you the details of um of the device we actually have uh, a distributor in new jersey uh who handles uh, all our business in new jersey and they do really do an outstanding job so um, there is an opportunity uh in your state to have somebody come to you and of course um, we're always happy to provide uh, agencies and institutions um, uh, like uh, your group, uh, Naomi, uh, a demo pair so that you can show them to potential end users uh, that uh, come to you for various reasons. Wondering if you could provide just a quick demo of the glasses to us, if that's possible. Sure. sure. Let me show you. Um, let me turn on my speaker. Let me show you. Um, let me show you the describe a scene feature. Oh. Um, many of the features on the device are voice activated. So. Um, they, uh, you don't have to tap and swipe and things like that. Some people like that because they mirror sort of the features that you'd have on your phone and they easier, easier, to, easy to use for those people that are used to using them. But most of the time we use, um, oh. we use, um, uh, the voice commands. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a describe scene, uh, 
I have a wall with some pictures on it and I'm going to uh, have the device capture that and then I'm going to use the AI feature to have it further explain that. Describe scene. Opening describe scene. A room interior with a wall displaying three framed artworks, a wooden cabinet holding various items including an American flag folded in a triangular case, tissue box, water bottle, and papers. There's a wall sconce on the right. To ask a new question about this image, press and hold the hint button. You can also do a one finger swipe down to go back or a two finger single tap to open the context menu. Please explain the pictures on the wall in detail. On the wall, there are four framed pictures arranged in a slightly asymmetrical pattern. From left to right, one. The first frame on the far left contains an image of what appears to be a Frangipani plumeria flower with a white center transitioning to a pale yellow against a neutral background. The frame is smaller in size relative to the others. Two. The second frame, which is larger than the first, seems to depict a scene possibly from a rural or mountainous area. A structure resembling a cottage with a thatched roof is visible, and there appears to be a valley or meadow in the foreground. The overall color palette is dominated by greens and blues, suggesting an outdoor setting. A rounded white object overlaps the image, which could be attributed to a reflection or glare in the photograph. 3. The third frame is similar in size to the second one and contains a calligraphy or symbol-based artwork. Two characters or symbols are prominently displayed against a beige or light brown paper with an ornamental border pattern, and the overall piece has a vintage or traditional aesthetic. 4. The fourth frame, which is more to the right and set apart from the trio, features a pattern tile, probably ornamental, with a design that includes two concentric circles and four symmetrical shapes, possibly fleur de lis, within the inner circle, all against the textured background. The arrangement of frames provides a blend of floral, scenic, symbolic, and ornamental elements, suggesting a diversity of interests or tastes of the person who chose the decorations. These so as you can see, it expanded upon just the general pictures that were up there and gave a lot of detail. Now, one of the things that was um, interesting about that description is, is on the first picture, it identified a flower. Now, there's nothing on the picture that would identify that flower, but it went through its memory and figured out what type of a flower it was and then uh, gave me that information through through uh, audio. So that's the kind of um, AI that the device would produce. And again, this was on a photograph. The, the next thing I'm going to do for you is I have a prop that's a employment letter. I'm going to have it uh, read. Export text. Home. Home. I'm going to have it read that um, that letter and then I'm going to ask it questions. Scan text. Opening scan text. Move document right. Move document up or your head down. Move document right. Move document up or your head down. Move document up or your head down. Move document up or your head down. Home. I'm going to try it again because um, there's a little less light in my office and it's not picking up. It is 1.003 a.m. Today is Tuesday, 28th May Battery. Scan text. Opening scan text. Move document right. 
Move document up or your head down. Move document away from you. Move document up or your head down. Move document up or your head down. Move document right. Once the picture is taken, you can put the document down and you don't need Reader, the document up anymore. James Monterey, 35 Runner Road, 89,001 Nevada. Subject, offer for the position of sales manager. Dear James, we were all very excited to meet and get to know you over the past few days. We have been impressed with your background and would like to formally offer you the position of sales manager. This is a full-time position for 40 hours a week. You will be reporting to the head of the sales department. Please note that Acme is an at-will employer. That means that either you or Acme are free to end the employment relationship at any time, with or without notice or cause. We will be offering you an annual gross salary of 3000 Now I'm going to ask it questions about that document uh, to which the AI feature will respond. What is the annual salary and benefits provided uh, to Mr. Montgomery? Envision is answering your question. I'm sorry, but I couldn't assist you because there are problems with the system. You can do a one finger double tap to try again or a one finger. Envision is answering. I'm sorry, could you please provide more context or clarify your question? What is the annual salary and benefits that is being offered to James Montgomery? Envision is answering your question. The annual gross salary is $3,000 along with a sales target based bonus of up to 10% and additional benefits such as health insurance coverage, corporate mobile or travel expenses, and 21 days of paid vacation per year. To continue asking a question about this document, press and hold the hint button. Do a one finger swipe down. When is Mr. Montgomery's response due? Envision is answering your question. Mr. Montgomery's response is due by 15th August. To continue asking a question about this document, press and hold the hint. Who is the HR manager that provided uh, this offer to Mr. Montgomery? Envision is answering. Andrews Melvin is the HR manager that provided this offer to Mr. Montgomery. To continue at home. So you can see the different things. What it does is it in this particular case, it helps you from having to go back and listen to it over and over. You can just ask questions. Now, this is also very helpful uh, in many areas for people that get like energy bills. Let's say you get, you know, uh, an electric bill or a gas bill. Um, you can have the device capture that and then ask it very various questions, the account number, how much you recently paid, the amount that's still due, uh, the um, uh, the uh, customer service number uh, in order to contact, the methods of payment, different things like that. And you can also use it to sort through like junk mail. You get a bunch of junk mail and you have it just read briefly, you know, the, the name and address on it, for example, or, you know, who's it from. And, and then you can say, okay, this is junk mail. I can throw it away. It also is very good at capturing menus. So let's say you have a favorite restaurant that you go to maybe once a month. You, have, you capture the menu in under the batch scan. And then when you go to that restaurant, every time you go to it, you bring up the menu. It, it's saved. The menu is saved in the device. And then you bring up the menu and you ask it questions. Let's say... You have a favorite burrito, but you forgot at uh, exactly what the name of it is. You ask the device to tell you all the uh, burrito entrees that are available at this particular restaurant, and it'll read those all out to you. So the AI feature, along with the scanning feature, 
uh, is very valuable, uh, especially in terms of uh, independence and um, confidence. So, uh, you know, people that normally would need their partner to like read a menu to them can actually have the device itself guide them either guide them through the menu one time or if it's a place where you you're going all the time uh, have it um, uh, have it find something on an existing menu uh, at a restaurant that you uh, frequent uh, uh, all the time any additional questions I think we've went over our half an hour but I'm still available to be able to answer all your questions Mike has his hand raised. Mike, would you like to ask a question? Do you know if the glasses work on communication device or an iPad? Yes, they do. Uh, they work on iPads. They work on Android types of uh, devices. Um, they also work on uh, on Braille type devices like notepads and things like that. Uh, anywhere we can load our, our software onto, which is like I told you, agnostic, uh, they can, our glasses can operate. So there's a wide variety of, of options. Many people uh, you, you use smartphones but for those that prefer to use, let's say, an iPad or an Android type of uh, device, uh, same, same uh, type of, of features. Um, in order to use the communications devices and the camera devices, uh, you do need those features, though, on, on, uh, on for example, an iPad. You do need a, a camera and you do need uh, uh, Wi-Fi and communications features. It is. Thank, thank you, Mike, for the question. Really? Interesting. It is really interesting. Yes, it's a, it's really, um, I mean, technology is going, going this way. We, you know, started out 60 years ago with, um, you know, uh, CCTVs, which are, you know, 20, 30 pounds that really were not transportable. And now, you know, uh, there's a big trend towards uh, wearable technology, uh, which, uh, you know, companies are actually moving to, even the companies that have traditionally just provided uh, CCTV or magnifier type of, of uh, devices, hand, hand magnifiers, things like that. The big, big push in the industry. If you go to a, a, a convention, you'll see uh, more and more of this type of device at those conventions. Any other questions? Okay, this is the last call for questions. Um, if there aren't any other questions, thank you so much, Bob, for providing you, us with this demo of the vision glasses. Thank you. Uh my email address, um, Naomi has it, but let me give it to you. Uh, it's Robert at Let's Envision dot com. Let's Envision is one word, all lowercase. And I'm happy to uh, answer a question I may not have answered. I'm happy to uh, uh, hook you up with our distributor um, and uh, or just to provide you additional information that you may um, you uh, may may need in order to make a, a good decision on uh, really all types of assistive technology.